I'm going to tell you about why this is the only monument in DC aliens would not be able to identify if they came down to Earth. Hello, my name is Rob. I'm a tour guide and the founder of Trip Hacks DC Tours. On this channel, I share my best tips, tricks, and hacks for visitors who want to explore Washington, DC. And I have to say that the Washington Monument is one of the coolest and weirdest sights in the city. When you think about it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. What does this big Egyptian obelisk have anything to do with George Washington? If aliens came down to Earth, they'd probably be able to identify the Lincoln Memorial and Jefferson Memorial because they both have giant statues of those men, but not the Washington Monument. So I'm going to tell you about four pretty obscure things about the Washington Monument that I find really interesting. And wait, before you click away because you think you already know all there is about the Washington Monument, hear me out. These are not boring Wikipedia facts, like that the monument is 555 feet tall or that it opened in 1884. No, these are things I usually don't even tell on my own monuments tours. And I'm curious to know which of these you think is the most interesting. Or if you don't find any interesting at all, leave a comment on the video and let me know. First, let's address the fact that the Washington Monument was not supposed to look like this. There were several early ideas for a Washington Monument. Some of them were pretty plain, but others were more grand. One of the earliest ideas was an equestrian statue of George Washington. After all, Washington was an army general General and frequently depicted on horseback. In fact, we don't even have to imagine what an equestrian statue of George Washington might look like because we already have one. In the middle of Washington Circle, two blocks north of the Foggy Bottom Metro Station, is this exact statue. And I bet almost no one seeks this out when they visit Washington, D.C. I'd even bet many people walk right past and don't even realize it's there. So maybe it's a good thing after all we didn't choose this for the design. Anyway, back to the obelisk. The reason why there's no statue of George Washington is not because they didn't want one. In fact, this drawing is Robert Mill's original design for the monument on its current location. And check this out. Zoom in, and who's that up there on top of that round colonnade? Now the problem was, after decades of underfunding and project delays, the colonnade got cut, which meant that only the centerpiece, the obelisk, was left. Now when I tell this story, sometimes people ask, well, why not just build the colonnade and the statue now? It would look so cool. And I suppose we could, but I'm fairly confident that we never will. Because we have had this version of the Washington Monument for well over 100 years. And I can only imagine the pitchforks that would come out if we tried to change it now. Now, before we get to the second obscure fact, I have to make a confession. If you came on a Trip Hacks DC Monuments tour, I probably told you that the Washington Monument is made out of two distinct colors of stone. Most tour guides say it's made out of two different types of stone. And that's not 100% accurate. There's actually a small, barely visible third color of stone in a strip right in the middle. Here's the deal. The stone at the bottom is called Texas Marble not named after Texas the state, but the quarry near Baltimore where it came from. After decades of project delays, they went back to that quarry to get more stone and finish the project, but oops, the stone was all gone. They found a similarly colored stone all the way up in Sheffield, Massachusetts. However, this was long before we had an interstate highway system or any real means of long distance transportation. So getting that stone down from Massachusetts was expensive and difficult. And only four rows of the Washington Monument were built with it before they went back to a different quarry near Baltimore and grabbed some stone that was a completely different color to finish the project. The third obscure fact has to do with what's at the top of the Washington Monument. And I'm not talking about the observation floor. I'm talking about the pyramid above that. There's actually a nine inch tall solid piece of aluminum up there. Now in the 2020s, that probably sounds pretty irrelevant, but it was a big deal at the time because back then aluminum was a precious metal. It was made for jewelry and at the time cost approximately the same amount per ounce as silver. If aluminum cost that much today, 
a single box of aluminum foil you'd get at the supermarket would cost $320 instead of the $3 that I actually paid for this box. Now, there are a lot of urban legends about why a block of aluminum is up there. Some people say it was an investment. Other people say it was a way to show that George Washington only deserved the best. The real reason is probably a lot more boring. At the time, aluminum was considered the best metal to hold up against lightning strikes and other shocks, which we get a lot of, especially now in the summer. And this last obscure fact isn't going to start out that obscure. When the Washington Monument opened in 1884, it was the tallest structure in the world. But everybody knows that. And they probably also know that five years later, in 1889, the Eiffel Tower opened in Paris and took the record. What people don't quite realize is that the Eiffel Tower is not just a little bit higher, it's about twice as tall as the Washington Monument. There's a really cool website called Size Explorer where you can actually see them side by side. This is what the Eiffel Tower would look like if it were located on the National Mall. And here's what the Washington Monument would look like in central Paris. I'll leave a link to this down in the description if you want to play around and put the Washington Monument in all kinds of interesting places. And if you made it this far, then I highly recommend watching another Trip Hacks DC video. So go ahead and click or tap right over here to watch the next one. Enjoy your trip.